Photographic film has been around for almost a century. And in that time, we've seen several different types of film dominate the market. Right now, it's your color negative, aka print film, and black and white film stocks like your Portra's, Gold, and Ilford HP5s, the ones that look like this after getting developed. But there was a time when slides, aka color positive, aka transparency film, dominated the world of photography. From press journalists to reputable magazines and photographers that we know and love, to everyday consumers, all preferred and used slide film. And they look like this when developed. Fully formed images that can be viewed with a light table or a projector. In today's video, I'll be shooting a few rolls of Kodak Ektachrome in 120 format, one of the few slide film stocks available in the market, and talk about some differences of slide film in general compared to color negative film. So I'm in near London Bridge and I'm looking over at Tower Bridge, which is supposed to be right there. And as you can see, it's fully covered in fog. I'm hoping for this one shot of fog slowly leaving and Tower Bridge emerging amongst the fog and hopefully framed by this line of lights and this weird looking building over here. I don't really know if it's gonna if it's gonna work out that way, but I'm gonna wait. It's uh, almost seven and the sun rises now for another half an hour. So I'm just gonna sit here and see if I get that shot, but if not, hey ho, it'll be another day. <laughs> Without going into too much detail, Ektachrome has been around in various forms since 1946. It was an alternative to Kodachrome when it comes to processing, as it's not as intensive, so people could develop these on site, whether that's at home or at labs. And as such, the process used to develop these have undergone various changes over the years, and the E6 process that is still in use to develop this slide film stock and other ones has been around since the 70s. If you'd like to know more about the history of slide film, I'll leave a few links in the description below. Probably the most important of all differences is that the dynamic range of a slide film is quite limited. For instance, your color negative film could have a dynamic range of 11, 12 stops or over, whereas the slide film has more like 5 to 7 stops of dynamic range. And as an extension of that, the latitude of slide film is quite narrow as well, meaning you really do have to nail the exposure within maybe half a stop tops to get a well exposed image. Uh, and in scenes that have a wider dynamic range, you will have to make the choice of whether you'd like to lose some detail in the brighter areas or on the darker areas. Thank you. 
slide film exhibits a lot more contrast than color negative film uh, right out the gate and it does enjoy better sharpness, finer, almost invisible grain, and the colors are true to life even when the conditions are not ideal. Maybe because these were designed for projectors and light tables compared to color negative stocks that had to be printed in the dark room and so there was a lot of room for manipulation. Um, I gotta say I was certainly impressed with the colors especially on cloudy days. When it comes to slide film, it's better to lean towards underexposure, uh, and that is because it's the darker part of the film or darker areas that is exposed on the film that is denser, therefore allowing for more information to be held. But keep in mind that slide film's latitude and dynamic range is quite limited, so when you're not sure of the exposure and you're choosing to underexpose, maybe uh, limit that to maybe half a stop to two thirds of a stop, not more than that when it comes to underexposing because the latitude is quite narrow. Whereas with color negative film, you, most of you probably already know, it's better to overexpose color negative film when you're unsure of the exposure because color negative film retains a lot of information in the brighter areas. You can see that the negative is a lot denser on the brighter areas, even up to, you know, two, some cases, three stops. The relationship between shutter speed and aperture uh, fails for longer shutter speeds and this is because the chemicals on your film lose their potency and so the sensitivity of your film decreases the longer it is being exposed to light uh, and therefore needs some extra time to compensate for this loss of sensitivity. This is what's called a reciprocity failure. For negative stocks, it's anything over one second you need to compensate, but for slight film, that number is usually 10 seconds and above, which is just over three stops of light before having to worry about compensating for reciprocity failure. Slide film stocks are available in limited low ISO variations, notably ISO 50 and ISO 100 compared to color negative film stocks that can go up to ISO 800 and in some cases can be pushed all the way up to ISO 3200 and have really good usable results. This is a hot topic difference. Slide film is a lot more expensive to shoot and develop compared to negative film. For example, my local lab develops a roll of C41 120 film for about six bucks. Whereas for a roll of ectochrome that you're seeing in this video, I paid 10 pounds per roll. So yeah, quite expensive. On the other hand though, slide film enjoys better archival quality compared to color negative film. So you can store them for longer and the quality of the film will be retained for much longer.
Regardless of the differences we talked about earlier, if you've not shot slide film, I recommend that you shoot it. It's certainly an experience to hold the slides and be able to see images on there. Apart from Kodak's Ektachromi 100, which is available in 135, 120 and large format, Fuji has a couple of stocks, Provia 100F and Velvia in both ISO 50 and 100 variations. And both of these uh, Provia and Velvia are available in 135, 120 and large format. Retrochrome is a, another brand that sells expired slide film, which is basically expired Ektachrome with ISO 400. Uh, that is actually government surplus that had been cold stored for years. Also, there was a, an announcement last year for a brand new ISO 400 slide film called the Fugu film, but we don't yet know when it'll be available for purchase. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I want to also thank my good friend Ramon, who gifted me a bunch of them recently, which included the rolls of Ectochrome that you saw today. Uh, and I'll link his YouTube and Instagram below in the description. So please go check him out and show him some love. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.